In this video, I'll be trying local Vietnamese foods like the iconic banh mi sandwich and beef pho. Then I'll be transforming those foods into grilled cheese sandwiches. In case you're new here and wondering why on earth I would do something like that, my name is Chef Tyler. I'm a lactose intolerant guy on a mission to make the world's best grilled cheese sandwich. To do this, I'm traveling to new places, trying local foods, and turning them into grilled cheese. Vietnam is the first stop on this journey, so without further ado, welcome to Ho Chi Minh. Vietnam may not have grilled cheese sandwiches as part of their food culture, but they do have the delicious banh mi. The most important part of any banh mi is the bread. Don't believe me? Well, banh mi literally just translates to bread. Baguettes were introduced to Vietnam by the French government during their occupation of Vietnam in the early 1900s, and they've been a staple in Vietnamese cuisine ever since. Walk down just about any street in the city and you will find several street carts selling banh mi sandwiches. Vietnamese pork sausage and pork belly are thinly sliced with incredible speed and precision. Then a light fluffy yet crunchy baguette is sliced open with scissors and carefully spread open. Blink and you'll miss the assembly of this sandwich. First, it's pork pate, generously slathered. Then a light layer of mayonnaise before the sliced meats are literally thrown onto the sandwich. Then add another form of pork, pork floss, before we get into the veggies. Pickled onions, pickled cucumber, pickled carrot, and a literal pile of cilantro bring bright, fresh flavors to the sandwich. The final step is to add some chili, garlic, and vinegar. Slice it in half and you have a top tier sandwich for less than two US dollars. Seriously, this sandwich was 40,000 Vietnamese dong, which is $1.63. I love Vietnam. And this banh mi was only 20,000 Vietnamese dong, which is 82 cents. Really strong pork flavor that's really well complemented with the pickled vegetables. It gives it some sweetness, some freshness. You can't do much better than this for under a dollar. This is a nearly perfect sandwich in my opinion, so I almost feel bad for saying this. Let's do my thing and turn this into a grilled cheese sandwich. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that banh mi's in Vietnam can have all sorts of toppings. I actually ordered two of the exact same banh mi's and they still came with different toppings. My strategy for turning these banh mi sandwiches into grilled cheese is to slice up some sourdough and toast it in olive oil just like I cook all of my grilled cheese sandwiches. I was a little bit worried about what sorts of cheeses I'd be able to find in Vietnam, but I'm pretty happy that I was able to find Gruyere, aged cheddar, and Swiss cheese. Cheddar cheese is not the best melting cheese, but Swiss cheese is really good at melting and usually leads to pretty good cheese pulls. Then I added some Japanese mayo to the inside of the bread and I'm going to scrape out some of the pate of the banh mi and add that to the other side. The pate used on banh mi sandwiches is typically pork liver pate, which I know some of you probably think is gross, but trust me, it's delicious. I'm going to be adding all of the meats to the sandwich before I toast it, but I'm going to save the vegetables to add after it's toasted because nobody likes hot soggy vegetables. Actually, I guess hot soggy vegetables is pretty much just steamed vegetables, which people do like, but you get my point. If you watch my short content, then you know the first few grilled cheeses I made in Vietnam were a little bit of a struggle to toast, but I finally figured it out because this one turned out perfectly. And now that the sandwich is cooked, I can add in those fresh vegetables. Close up the sandwich, and we've officially made another sandwich. Okay, look, I get it. This one was super easy to turn into a grilled cheese sandwich since it already was a sandwich. But the next dish we're gonna be turning into a grilled cheese sandwich is literally a noodle soup, so that one's gonna require a bit more creativity. Before we move on to that though, let's see how the banh mi grilled cheese sandwich actually tastes. And you know, it wasn't great, probably a five out of 10. I could barely taste the pork, it mostly tasted like hot cucumber, which is not great. I did have an idea to save this, which was to dip it in some nook mom, which is a chili garlic seasoned fish sauce, but I was having a really hard time opening the bottle. But you know what they say, the best things in life don't come easy. We eventually got it opened, I added some to a bowl, and tried dipping the sandwich in that. This added a little bit of spice and saltiness that helped all the flavors make a little bit more sense together. That being said, I think the banh mi on its own is better than the grilled cheese version, so there's no need to make one of these. Don't worry, this was not a wasted experiment though, because at the end of this video, I'm going to be taking what I learned from each of these food experiments and making another grilled cheese that I think represents Vietnam's flavors in a delicious way. Before we make that one though, it's time to try some beef pho, and let's figure out how we're gonna turn this into a grilled cheese sandwich.
When you think of Vietnamese food, you probably think of pho. And chances are you're probably thinking of Southern Vietnam style of pho, as this is the most popular in the US. It's a little bit sweet, has lots of fresh herbs, and a few extra add-ins that you can experiment with to make your particular bowl entirely your own. In Vietnam, this comforting dish is most often served for breakfast on the street. Each morning, thousands of people sit down on tiny plastic stools at colorful tables waiting for the breakfast of champions. When you're ordering pho, there's usually a few options, but in my opinion, the most classic and delicious one is pho thai. As soon as you say those two beautiful words, assembly will begin. Cooked noodles are dipped into hot water to refresh them before they're placed into a bowl. On top of the noodles, add an even layer of thinly sliced raw beef, green onion, and white onion. Then ladle on some of the boiling pho broth to instantly cook the beef. And don't be fooled by the clarity of the broth, this thing is full of flavors. Spices like star anise, cinnamon, coriander, fennel, cloves, and black cardamom work together to create that signature pho flavor that you know and love. The soup will arrive at your table within two minutes of you ordering, but it's actually not done yet. Alongside your bowl of pho, you'll receive a pile of herbs, bean sprouts, hoisin sauce, fish sauce, chili sauce, fresh chilies, and limes. You can add as much or as little of each of these things to your dish to customize the flavors. And there it is, pho thai. Now let's turn it into a grilled cheese sandwich. I picked up an order of pho thai to go and brought it back to the kitchen because it's time to do some experimenting. Since the broth is one of the most important parts of a bowl of pho, I knew I had to incorporate it into this grilled cheese sandwich, but I wasn't sure how. The obvious answer is to just dip a grilled cheese sandwich into the broth, but that's too obvious, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I boiled down the broth to highly concentrate the flavors, and then I chopped up some cheese and made some pho cheese. If you've seen my video on how to make homemade American cheese, you'll know that in that video I say that you can use any liquid to make American cheese. And yes, that does include pho. However, there was one big roadblock, which is that when you're making American cheese, you normally would use some sodium citrate to help the cheese bond to the liquid. I didn't have any of that, so it didn't really bond that well, but we did kind of fat wash it with the pho, so it worked. I let the cheese chill in the fridge overnight so it could re-solidify, and now it's time to make the grilled cheese sandwich. I was super excited to try the pho cheese, and I'm happy to report that it actually was pretty decent. The fish sauce in the broth gave a nice saltiness to the cheese and the fat from the beef gave a really good aftertaste. The cheese was honestly good enough to earn a spot on a charcuterie board. Of course I'm adding some mayonnaise to the sandwich because I always do, but I'm also going to add some hoisin sauce and sriracha because these are two condiments that are commonly added to pho. The hoisin sauce has a deep, sweet, earthy flavor while the sriracha has a bright, spicy flavor. I'm quickly stir frying the beef and onions before adding them to the sandwich because I didn't want to put raw beef on the sandwich. And this is the last step I'm going to do before cooking the grilled cheese sandwich. I toasted the sandwich in olive oil and it was looking fantastic. But of course, like any good bowl of pho, I had to pair this with some fresh herbs. I didn't want to cook these herbs in the sandwich because I felt like it might damage their delicate flavors. Their best use is just raw. It is literally my job to make and eat grilled cheese sandwiches, and this is still up there as one of the best grilled cheese sandwiches I've had. Pho has a lot of complicated flavors, so I wasn't sure if this would work, but it worked out perfectly. This sandwich was of course warm, crunchy, and cheesy like you would expect out of any grilled cheese sandwich, but it was also beefy, savory, salty, sweet, spicy, and herby. I think you get what I'm getting at here which is why I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10. That's gonna be hard to beat, but we are gonna try. Since I'm on a mission to make the world's best grilled cheese sandwich, I'm really trying to learn from each one of these food experiments. So at the end of each one of these episodes, I'm going to be making a new grilled cheese sandwich that's not necessarily inspired by a dish, but rather the flavors that I learned about during that video. While I didn't love the banh mi grilled cheese sandwich, it did introduce me to meat floss. It's a really great way to add a meaty flavor to a sandwich without adding more grease and moisture. From the pho grilled cheese, I learned that beef and cheese is an amazing combo. Okay, well, maybe I already knew that. I think everybody knows that. But I did learn that if you pair something that would be otherwise heavy, like melted cheese and beef, with fresh herbs and acidity, it can actually have a pretty well-balanced flavor. So to summarize these learnings, I decided to make a Thai chili beef chicken floss and shiso leaf grilled cheese sandwich topped with fresh lime juice. This sandwich was super beefy, slightly spicy, herby, and citrusy. These flavors have a ton of potential together, but if I made it again, I'd use half the amount of beef. I'm still gonna give it a 7.8 out of 10, which is a very respectable score. But that does mean that today's winner is the Beef Pho Grilled Cheese Sandwich. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe because our adventures in Vietnam are not over yet. And in the next video, I'll be introducing you to some of Vietnam's lesser known dishes.